Resurrected Republic, Truth Radio Broadcast on RBN, the Republic Broadcasting Network, because you can handle the truth. Well, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, <laughs> Mr. Brendan O'Connell, hate speech, an exclusive interview with the handsome traveler. We're going to be discussing several things tonight, one of which, most important, really, is uh, Brendan's hate speech trial that landed him in the situation that he's in, persecuted, prosecuted, uh, but also... You know, in the context of what's going on with, with Alex Jones right now, right? Because being a, a paleo conservative like I am, 80% or 85% of what Alex Jones shares on his network. I, I mean, I love some of the reports by David Knight and, and I mean, some really good stuff in, in, until, and of course, there's the over the top stuff and then there's the stuff that he doesn't talk about. But what, what is what I consider mastering the human domain, one of the biggest psyops on the American people right now, is that Alex Jones is on every single publication, video, mainstream media news network. They're all talking about him for the so-called uh, violations of, of violent content and all of this. The same guy, just like Tommy Robinson, who, and I find that that's very interesting, too. That whole plan kind of plotted out thing. He went to jail for a little while. Both Alex Jones and Tommy Robinson have something in common. What they have in common, they have a couple things in common. One, what they have in common is that they were pretty popular, but these incidents that they just went through within the past couple months have now catapulted both of them to superstardom. You can't buy better advertising. Brendan, welcome to the show. I would love to hear your take on what's going on with Alex Jones right now. Uh, hey, Tom, thanks for having me on. I'm sorry, but my everything is being messed with in real time right I know, now. I know. Right before everything. the broadcast, yeah, right before the broadcast, ladies and gentlemen, uh, he has had some of the worst uh, technological problems that, you know, and, and we, we're used to this kind of thing with interference and stuff. I. I kind of let it roll off my back, but this this guy he's he's in Malaysia, you know, uh, basically exile in exile. Um, so so all of this has got to be quite a bit on you. Um, uh, no, so, no, it's interesting. I find it interesting as to who they want me to talk to and who they don't, and they don't like you for some reason. They really don't like you. I can talk to Mike Herzog relatively okay, but they don't like you. Well, I, 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 can, I can tell you why. I can tell you why. Why I think. OK, first of all, I'm not a goose stepping, um, you know, national socialist. Right. I, I have a lot of respect for the German people, think that they were lied on, on horribly in many ways. But I am for limited government. I'm a conservative and I'm, I'm among a community who have a lot of the programming of Christian Zionism and Schofield Bible programming. And I'm waking them up. Uh, and, and they don't want that. That is exactly the opposite of what they exist to, to try and do. Uh, you know, they have to have their division. If you're, if you're a whacked out leftist, you can hate Israel because you're already discredited. Uh, but the most, more of the paleo conservatives, they're sensible. They know how to explain the argument. They know where Trotskyism was introduced. They know where, where the infection came from. Uh, we don't believe in war. We don't believe in big government. We don't believe in nation nation building around the world. Uh, I would really rather not do any business with any communist nation. But, of course, the United States, at the same time the Cold War was going on, was pumping billions into the Soviet Union. So they don't like us because we, we go back into history and we tell the truth and we put together, put together the dots. But we're not haters. Uh, I don't like... I have certain aspects that I have a problem with Talmudic ideology and supremacism. Um, but I don't hate every Jew just because they're a Jew, because most Jews out there are like Americans. They're born and raised. They don't even, they've never even read the Talmud. My, you know, my, I, I've, I have friends that they don't even know what I'm talking about when I show them some of this stuff. It blows their mind. Okay. We as people have become indoctrinated by systems of, created by men. 
and and as a Christian, uh, I kind of look to the teachings of Christ. He said, "There's neither Greek nor Jew. There's no there's no bond or free. All are one. You know, all are one in Christ Jesus." And you know, being a Christian, I have to say, you know, if you can reject the evil, even among you, like you know, I, I had uh, growing up, I had ideologies that I was that I adhered to that that had aspects to it that were unsound, and I rejected them. If you can't look into your own self and reject these things, then there's a problem. Well, one of the reasons why they don't like me so much is because it makes sense. I don't hate everybody, so they can't paint me as some Nazi. And that's the problem. That's why they come down on me. And I know why they come down on you. <laughs> yeah, it's very strange. Though. It's been relatively it's been relatively peaceful for the last yeah. few problems, but there's definitely something going on. And um, mm -hmm. I've never had where Skype buttons don't exist. I've never had an, <laughs> auto an automatic update of my phone just just appear when it's all manual. They updated uh, uh, all sorts of stuff. I had to block it. I forgot to block it on my my no root firewall. Um, uh, it just took me a bit by surprise, and I'm just tired of it. You know, you got to triple check. Did you get the email? You've got to send 15 emails to check that they got the original to email. Get one, it's just, right. Yeah. Uh, it's just and we're you. using, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, we're using an email service that's end-to-end -end encrypted. <laughs> so much for that. But unfortunately, ProtonMail uses Radware routers, my mortal enemy, Zohar Zisipel. They came under an extended DDS uh, DOS attack, denial of service, a few weeks back. It was really bad. And they admitted in their in their communications with people that they used Radware routers the best. And I went, yeah. <laughs> I wrote him a letter saying, Do you know who that is? That's like the king of Israeli military intelligence, Zohar Zisipel. They then put out another one saying there's rumors going around we used Israeli stuff which gets sent to Israel. That's wrong, that's not correct. Well, who knows? But I will look to change from Proton Mail at some stage. I just haven't yeah. got around to it. I'm afraid. Great. Well, well, you you talk me, yeah, they're all the same, and and you know the dominance in the in the technological uh, aspects of, of, of Israel, and um, it's it's hard to get away from that. I mean, they were so tied into during uh, during nine eleven, uh, you know, all of the technology things that were going on with them. They were all tapped into the FBI, DEA, uh, all of the communications of the federal government. Right, we're 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 getting routed through Tel Aviv. <laughs> Now, so, oh, look, it goes so deep, it's, it's, oh, I don't want to say it's depressing, but there's a sense of, um, if Mattis, Mattis is it, as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion. I hope you're mind. right. I, I, you've been saying that. But if I he's not, if right. he's not, I'm, telling, I'm going to be really negative. I'm going to be really negative to you right now. If Mattis is not for real, it's all over. There's nothing can help because the penetration of the United States is so deep into every single government department. You wait till this video I'm doing if I ever finish the damn thing. It is so deep and been going on so long. They own every single government department, without exception. There's no exception. Israel owns them all. And when you understand the details of their ownership, it's frightening. And they did it. In, here's, here's, the, here's the best bit. They did it in full public view. That's what's so incredible. <laughs> yeah, they did. But not, only, not only did they do it in full public view. I know I always go back to 9-11 because this evokes some emotion in people. The only people that were arrested on 9-11, two different truckloads, by the way, the only people that were arrested were a crew on King Street and Liberty in Manhattan who were on their way to the George Washington Bridge, it was suspected. They were pulled over, they ran from the truck, and they detonated the truck on King and Liberty. This was reported on the news. They ended up being Israelis. And they ended up being deported back to Israel. Now, how many people? I, I want to ask you: If they were Russians, if they were if they were KGB, or if they were if they were Muslims, would we have deported them back to the country of their origin? Maybe if they were from Saudi Arabia, I don't know. But you get the point. I mean, but this was all you know, hush, hush, hush. Chertoff just, you know, we had the the their their intelligence assets across the the Hudson there. Filming the first and second strikes, uh, somebody called the cops on them. They called them the dancing Israelis. They went back to Israel. These guys were so bold. They went on Israeli TV and said, oh, we were there to document the event. What event? You son of a... What event? So, I mean, I keep going back to these points in history because 240 spies 
arrested following this. 240 Israelis arrested and deported. So at what point, as an American, do you say that, okay, we can have this whole, con this whole conversation about Judaism and everything else another time. Right now, we're under attack by a foreign nation, and, they're, and, and we have our American politicians are so up their, their culos, they're all, they're, 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 they all make the pledge, and they're calling them our best friend. It's, it's, it's almost like I feel like I'm living in a different freaking reality, bro. Well, that's what it is. And wait till you understand what the Binational Industrial Research and Development Foundation is. Wait till you find out what the Binational Agricultural Research and Development Foundation is. Wait till you find out what the Binational Science Foundation is. Basically, a bunch of communists from Poland and Russia walked into the Congress, said, we're now legislating that you will send all your material back to the old Soviet Union. Thank you. Good day. Henry Kissinger yep. set it up. Same time yep. that he was setting up China, 73 to 79, the Camp David Accords, it was all set up then. And now we see the result, the complete infiltration of the military-industrial complex, the FBI, the DOJ, every single government department. Every, I mean, every single one is deeply penetrated. I have to use the word communism, communist, McCarthy era, Fulbright, Senator Fulbright, what a hero. McCarthy's yep. going to need a new movie. Oliver Stone, make a new movie. McCarthy was a hero. And two, one final comment. Um... People need to understand that um, I just forgot what my final comment was. That's what you need to understand. That's how bad <laughs> my brain is. The final, the final comment was my big final comment, which just flipped straight out of my head then, um, um, is this is planned penetration, and we need to use the term communism because people understand that. Soviet Union, never gone. The Soviet Union and its Soviet satellite states have never left, but we need to call it what it is. It's Rothschild. It's a puppet of Rothschild, Council yep. on Foreign Relations, Royal Institute yep. of International Affairs, Trilateral Commission. It's communist, which very soon is going to turn into, of course, communitarian, which will be communism yes. light with flowers, with flowers and a trackable phone. So yes. when people can just understand communist penetration, Yuri Bezmenov, old school language, admittedly, it's old school language. I almost mm -hmm. feel embarrassing using the terms, but that's what it is. And I hope in the video to come, two long, boring hours. I'm going to try and sexy it up with the soundtrack. Jaleel, please get onto that. Um, <laughs> you will understand that McCarthy's going to have to have a movie made that the man was a hero. A hero. Well, you know, I, I, I often say, I tweeted today in a, in a comment. I'm not going to share the whole comment. But I tweeted today to uh, one of these puppets that are, that are advocating for the supremacism. Uh, you know, it really looks like hashtag Joe McCarthy was right. <laughs> yes. But, but, but Joe McCarthy was only half right. He could see the he could see the ones out there that were more overt. But the people within his own party, I don't know if he could really see them. Uh, but but still, he was he was right. Oh no, I think he did. And what Senator Fulbright, it all clicked for me when I I'd, I I knew about Fulbright, but I'd never read the direct stuff. And there he was. In was it January 1963, delving into the depths of the ADL and foreign direct interference. I mean, it's not like now; it's not Russian interference with the with the process. It's Israeli. They won't yeah. say Israel. So people need to understand that there are good agents within this whole system that are screaming Israel, and there they are at the top, Mueller and Holder, and 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 you know, still Comey, still running around behind the scenes, screaming Russian when they know damn well it's Israel. It's cover. It's cover. Yeah. Yeah, they got their, their, their easy boogeyman that they can't touch. And, and Well, this is why I'm hopeful for Mattis, because Mattis dragged out Lockheed. That was Mattis who lined up Lockheed to be dragged out before the cameras in March. No, was it March? And they said, uh, we will not be losing any more technology. <laughs> that, was big. that was really, really big. And there was Mattis running around behind the scenes. Now, Jones never uses Mattis's name. Dr. Steve Bichanik occasionally does. They don't talk about him. No. Not even me. Why? No. I hope it's a positive sign. Uh, and, you know, like, like we, we opened up this talking about, and, and I know Alex Jones is just a footnote for me, um, but what I'm seeing happening, I'm just sitting back, and it's, it's just surreal. I mean, I, I searched Alex Jones censored and, you know, Washington Post, New York Times, 
Guardian. I mean, it's 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 not just the United States. It is he is a global name now, and and all they do like like Tommy Robinson did. Okay, granted, I don't agree with his arrest, but I think it was all staged. But I don't agree with the arrest. Does that make sense? No, the arrest was the arrest. Please, on that note, the arrest was perfectly justified. He signed yeah, well, a contract. No, well, that was absolutely. I've had the same thing happen to me. You know, I was. I, born. I, I agree, but I disagree only in that I don't believe that the, the courts have the right to suppress coverage. I don't believe that they have the no, right, no, no. Well, right this to... Is, no, no, no. That, no, so no, no. The... I'm talking on two different levels here. Uh, All right. On, uh, just uh, because I don't believe in censorship, period. I don't believe with the laws that they used or what he was forced to agree with. But here's the thing. I think it was all staged. I think he knew that he was going to get arrested, and I think that he knew that the, things were going to turn out the way it was. And and look at what happened in in Britain. Oh, just all of these people came out. He he was he was catapulted to superstardom. You could not be a Hollywood production company and and get and and set that up better. Couldn't do it. That was yeah. Incredible. Well, I think he was for Fire. real. I, I... He wasn't. He didn't personally set it up. He his ego is the not. size of a bus. His ego is the size of a bus. Now he got excited. He knew. He knew what he was doing in the sense that he thought he'd be fine, and uh, he was in genuine shock. I love body language. He was in genuine shock. What are you doing? You can't arrest me. And he was absolutely terrified. He he told so much horse pucky about his time in jail. He was never forced into general population. It's absolutely against the rules. He was put in solitary confinement. He didn't want to eat the food in case it was tampered with, completely understood. Um, the guy is a wimp, right? He's a five foot four, what's his real name? Lennon? Yaxley yeah, Lennon. Lennon, Lennon. Lennon. Right. He's got like three three different names and he was convicted of fraud, mortgage fraud, all kinds Sal of Tanning things. Salon. Yeah. Do you know one of the number one ways drug traffickers launder money? Do you want to know one of the number one ways? Tanning, tanning salons and pizzerias. Pizzer tanning salons and pizzerias. Yeah. He's a nothing but a rat, grub, maggot, piece of garbage, criminal informant for the police. That's what he is. He's a rat. And that's now, who they employ. Now, I have to say, what he was covering, of course, the grooming, that, that stuff is insane too. But but part of the problem is, is that people are attacking the symptom, right? And in a presentation I, I did today, I prepared it. Uh, I'll probably be rolling it tomorrow. I kind of tie it all in. When you yeah. have... Tommy Robinson and you have the Alex Joneses out there and they're not talking about Paideia. They're not talking about Barbara Spector. They're not talking about these, these, uh, uh the Scottish, uh, similarity to Paideia, which is another organization that promotes multiculturalism. So they're, they're attacking the, the, the symptom. They're not attacking the virus, which is what's causing it. The people that are that are implementing this, that are putting it into motion. You remember that clip, uh, Mike? Do me a favor and bring up that Barbara Specter clip. Yeah, just, <laughs> just, please, I, I have to do this just for, to reminisce um, of, uh, uh, of when she said, "You know, Europe will not survive." Oh my God, these people are psychotic. Yeah, they're nuts. They're, Look, they're, they're sociopathic in that they believe what they're doing. It's like a rapist. He starts to rape the woman, and the woman kicks him in the privates, and he rings the police to complain. Hey, my rape victim is fighting back. There's something wrong. That's sociopathy, man. They're mentally ill. Yeah. yeah. It's, We're just it's trying really to enslave you, boy. Crazy. What's wrong with you? Okay, do me a favor and roll, roll that clip of Barbara Spector. As we heard, there are people in Sweden who support Israel and have a deep sense of the injustice of the present situation. It's these people who give hope to those who still believe that things will get better here. One of them is Barbara Spector, a former American who made Aliyah and then, ten years ago, with the help of the government of Sweden, set up a non-denominational institute of Jewish learning with the Greek name of Paideia here in Stockholm. She believes the current wave of anti-Semitism in Sweden will pass and that Jews have an important role to play in a country undergoing profound change. I think there's a resurgence of anti-Semitism because at this point in time, Europe has not yet learned how to be multicultural. And I think we're going to be part of the throes of that, of that transformation, which must take place. Europe is not going to be the monolithic uh, 
uh, societies that they once were in the last century. Jews are going to be at the center of that. It's a huge transformation for Europe to make. They are now going into a multicultural mode, and Jews will be resented because of our leading role. But without that leading role and without that transformation, Europe will not survive. <laughs> Paideia. I believe that. Just Europe, <laughs> just other people's it's okay. culture. <laughs> it's okay. You can't, you can't say she didn't give you a warning. She told you what she was going to do. It's us. See, the, well, they have I'm to. tired of about Jews, and I want to start looking at us. We are so disorganized. We're so stupid. We're so all over the place. We're always whining, oh, the Jews, this, the Jews came, bought us porn, the Jews did this, the Jews did that. No, no, no. Listen, you you gave them that power when you started buying all their products. How many years now have yes. you had all this how many years have we had all this information at our fingertips and we just kept on going, whining about the evil Jews? I thank the Jewish community worldwide. Whatever a Jew is, race, ethnicity, religion, cultural attitude, whatever. I don't even know what a Jew is. Uh, just remember, please, and I'll say this very quickly, most of my information comes from, guess where? From Jews. Practicing oh, yeah. some of them. Oh, no, no, no right? doubt, no doubt. There's, just, there's... just to let people know. Okay. Well, let's, but, let's clarify this real quick, though. There, there are... There are Jewish supremacists who go by the Talmud who are orthodox and they are dedicated to their cause. There are more cultural Jews that eat matzo ball soup and they, uh, they, they celebrate Hanukkah, but they don't really get into all that stuff. They're no different than every other American, than every other religion. So there are, when we talk about this subject, it's difficult because there are, just like Americans, there is a variety of different people from all different walks. So we're, I don't want to paint everybody with a broad brush. That, that's not fair. That's not right. Yes, and not no. I, I do agree. But to some point, too, there, Tom, is we have to have personal responsibility. Um, we do need to make distinctions in this era of hate speech legislation. And I think it helps immensely. Yes. We need to. That we need to build that middle ground between, that, in my view, the traditional Labor or Democrat left trade union movement, the old school boys with beards and flannelette shirts, the guys that stood in, uh, you know, and got shot at and beaten with police truncheons. And we need to, away from that Marxist feminist garbage, and um, not that I'm against women's rights or the facts that men, men did need a slap about the way they treated their women, obviously, and culture no, treats yeah. women. But yeah. We need to link that up with the old constitutional Second, Fourth Amendment Christians, um, the middle grounders, you know, those good, good old guys that um, are all for the American Constitution who, who um, are ex-naval aviators, ex-CIA or serving or whatever. But there's a middle ground of pro-America, pro-business. They're into cryptocurrencies. We need to bring those two things together. We need to create a safe space for Jews to say, you will be protected. Just here's the minimum standard requirement. No mucking around. We know what we have to do. Let's just do it. But we need that safe space. And in a world of Alex Jones and Marxist feminists, extreme left, extreme right, uh, polarization, which is what's going on, um, mm -hmm. forming internet ghettos, which is what's going on. Alex Jones is assisting the establishment to form that internet ghetto with his friend Bibi Netanyahu. I mean, Alex Jones is personal friends with Benjamin Netanyahu. Personal <laughs> How can you be objective, right? <laughs> All right. now, and, and, and Steve Pachenik, Dr. Steve Pachenik has been running interference and sucking people like myself a little more discerning than most, keeping us on board, thinking, oh, Alex is playing a game, but Dr. Pachenik's really running things. It's a smart move. Donald Trump's a shield. Uh, I'm pro-Israel. I'm pro-Israel, but it's a shield. And then you finally realize, my God, how did I fall for that garbage? How well, you know, we were, we were just talking about, and, and, you know, I fall back to this Barbara Spector thing. One of the things that she said is that there's going to be a rise in anti-Semitism because of our leading role in basically destroying European culture, right? So I was, I was going through perusing some articles today, and I, I found, uh, I, I sent this over to you. Um, it, it's, it's, not, it's not incredibly new. It came out this year in January, I believe, but it's introducing the anti-Semitism cyber monitoring system ahead of International Holocaust Remembrance Day diaspora uh, affairs Ministry, if that doesn't sound creepy enough, reveals new and unique platforms to combat online anti-Semitism. We'll get back to that after a few words from our sponsors. Resurrect the Republic, Truth Radio Broadcast with Brendan O'Connell.
Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to Public Truth Radio broadcast on RBN. Um, Brandon, we do have a caller on the line. Uh, if you don't mind if, uh, if I jump over to him real quick, um, I'd like to try and do that with our audience when they call in. And folks, if you do want to call in, 1-800-313-9443, please make the comment directed to or question to Brendan or to the subject matter. We're going to be covering, just in a few minutes after this call, introducing the anti-Semitism cyber monitoring system in relation to the comments that were made by Barbara Spector. For, she was forecasting the rise in anti-Semitism because of this involvement uh, uh, by, by pro-Israel Zionist Israel firsters in, in this supporting this influx of, of mass immigration and, and multiculturalism, I think that this is really important. But let me get to the call real quick. David in California, you're on. Yeah, I was just looking up some of that stuff with Barbara Spector. I, you know, I saw that, that famous speech of hers about five times. Anyways, uh, <laughs> yeah. this one guy was just claiming she was backed by this guy, uh, this one agent um, foundation that does uh, it has to do with a uh, Holocaust studies, and the other one is she. Sure. She told the Swedish government she got four, like uh, equivalent to about four million dollars uh, in, in crowns, uh, Swedish crowns, oh, yeah. the Swedish government to start that, and, and said they had Nazi gold, and they they said no, they did, they investigated, and they did it, but they out of a gesture just to give her money, they gave her a bunch of stuff. And I I was always looking up in the last you know every once in a while. Where are the Jews in Sweden or Europe that are confronting her? And I didn't, I didn't find. I'm sure there might be a few, or maybe there isn't. But then, uh, well, like this guy's claiming a lot of the Western, uh, a lot of the, at least some of the Jewish people are saying this is payback for the Holocaust. Some people, yeah, are, yeah, I've, I've, I've heard, I've heard those arguments too. Now you have a, a group in Africa, a tribe in Africa that's trying to go after the German government. Um, for genocide like a hundred years ago and now we have like the third German government since that happened it's not even the same government it's not the same anything and and uh, of course the people are, are subject to and, and oftentimes their government they're they're not in total support of these things that go on all across the world so yeah this is uh, the same old thing let's let's uh, let's rewind the clock well you know what my, my, my relatives lived in Scotland and we were invaded by the Vikings. Uh, we were also right. occupied by the Romans. So does Rome need to now pay my Scottish ancestors? Yeah, God, it's just crazy. It's crazy. I know, it goes on and on. There's yeah. no business like show of business. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for your call. Do you have a question? Do you have a question or a comment? No, I'm, 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 I'm good. That's about it. Thank you. Oh, thank you for your call. Uh, Brendan, I wanted to, to share with you, there's very two very short clips uh, in what I sent over to my producer. It's introducing the anti-Semitism cyber monitoring system. Ahead of International Holocaust Remembrance Day, Israel's Ministry of Diaspora Affairs, like I said, kind of creepy, revealed a new and unique platform for real-time information and analysis of online anti-Semitism. Now, keep in mind, they are directly... There are people that are directly doing things that are causing this. Are they're, they're people that, that are against this multiculturalism are automatically going to see the Barbara Specters and yeah, they're going to have a problem with it, like I do, right? So check this this clip out. It's called Israel Israeli Diaspora Minister demands that the internet companies fight anti-Semitism. Go ahead and roll it. How much work? How much hard work they're putting in to fight pornography? and to fight uh, fake news. And uh, that's, a, that's good news that they're faking, fighting fake news. However, they've not put in anything near the, that effort in fighting anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism is okay, and it's not. And once we've got this, right now I'm calling upon the leaders of Facebook and Twitter to start acting. You cannot host all this anti-Semitism within your house and then just claim it's free, freedom of speech. It's not. It's violence. It's anti-Semitism. <laughs> oh, God. Can you believe this guy? It, uh, 
No, no comment. It's just business as usual, man. That's yeah. um, you got to understand. He's he's scared. Um, he's worried about Kristallnacht and broken windows in in synagogues, and so am I. Because I don't here, look at this. Even if you quote unquote hate Jews, you have a quote. And just to remind people, I had the biggest race hate hate speech trial in history. My trial. No one asked yes, me about yes. it. I've done detailed detailed analysis. I had a rabbi on the stand. I was cross examining Rabbi David Freelich. No one even asked me a damn question. I had Professor of Jewish Civilization Studies, Professor Andrew Marcus. No one asked me a damn question. I am an expert on the legislation. I will go up against a lawyer or a specialist in this. I will go up against them. I spent three years in jail studying the philosophical background to the legislation, why they're doing it, the problems with it, the good things are with it. Ask me. I'll tell you. And I will tell well, you. I don't I disagree. I have the links of your broken arm. I have all the links up on, on my screen right now of all of this. And this is something that really does need to be covered. And, you know, I, you know, I apologize to you that nobody's asked you about this because it is really seriously important. I mean, it, it really, really is. So please tell us about it, please. The guy has a point. I'm a, look, before anyone, I'm going to give ammunition to my enemies here. I'm actually for hate speech legislation in principle, and I'll tell you why. It's a bit like legislation licensing of firearms. In principle, we have to get a license to drive a forklift or drive a car. Why shouldn't you have to get a license to show you can operate and have the psychological maturity to own and use a firearm? Talk I'm not against that. that. Yeah, all right. But I understand also the principles in the Constitution which said America's, America's uh, unique. We're about... Uh, uh, government is the biggest enemy. Governments are the one that kill millions. And we're going to give... This is what's so unique about America and the Constitution. It says governments are bad and they will kill you. So we understand that. So I understand those principles. And also yep. understand I, I, I like legislation which prevents idiots getting hold of cars, high-powered vehicles. Otherwise, we're going to have to kill those idiots, aren't we? We're going to have to go and start beating them <clears> up and basically them into the head to stop them driving at 200 kilometres an hour in a 40-kilometre-an-hour school zone. So if people would just think this through. The point is this. We have so many idiots. Some are manufactured, some are just legitimate, and I've been one of them. Bad-tempered, belligerent, didn't care. If you actually read the philosophical foundations of this legislation, which is being tested for real in Australia, one of the most important testing grounds, it says we are trying to encourage... Um, polite discourse. We're trying to encourage civilized debate. We don't Who's, want who is trying to the people that are pushing the legislation, and okay, it's not just Jews. I, I have to. I have to. I have to just. There's there's something in my crawl that I have to I have to talk about about this. First of all, I don't trust any of these politicians for one. But for two, um, our principles here in America. Are, are built upon, you know, those who sacrifice security for liberty uh, will will get neither. And and that's so true. And and I, I hear what you're saying with the hate speech legislation and all that, but I have to say that this was born of Marxism. It's born to silence. Well, can I, can I let me finish. But go ahead, go let ahead. me finish. Let me finish. That's the point I'm about to make. The point I'm tr trying to see both sides. What I'm trying to tell you is the people, many of whom are sincere, are trying, they're saying, we are not about interfering in speech. We want civilised speech. So, so we can actually have people have a civilised debate free of lunatics. Okay, And that includes me. You're talking number one lunatic here. I've had to mature, which is why I think I've been put through the mill. It's God slapping me around. You're going to grow up. You're going to grow up. You're going to grow up. Be responsible. You know, see, see the important the points you have to make and your responsibility to, to ensure peace and goodwill and the public interest. Not, your, not, in, not satisfying your emotional needs. Go to therapy. It's about the public interest. And it's not in the public interest to call for killings of all Jews and, no, and there's no not. Jews helping. Of course not. Oh, and all that stuff. But people do. Now, imagine if we could get rid of those clowns immediately and see the application. Well, you can do that already. Oh, you, in cr you mean the goose step? Criminal... Let me finish. Criminal legislation in America already provides for incitement, incitement and the public peace. You could use that legislation. So what we really know is the intent of the backers, the deep backers of this legislation, their intent, not our intent, but their intent, is not to have a civilised debate. Their intent is to get the first step of control in 
legislation, which is the Talmudic rabbis endlessly making up laws to suit themselves. The intent of the legislation really is not civilised debate. The intent of the legislation is to shut up the goy from exposing, one, Jewish power, and in particular the current phase of Israeli domination of the high technology sector and their racial and religious lunatic supremacism. That's yes. their intent. But the other side of the argument is we need rational debate in the public interest free from over-emotional outbursts, which I agree I'm the king of too. But have <laughs> I made my point? I hand it to you. I'm handing yeah, it to you. You no, no, you you've made your point. Uh, but there are already laws that exist that existed prior yes. to hate speech legislation. There are laws on the books. Look, if I punch you in the face, it doesn't matter what caused me to do it unless if you didn't provoke me to do it, if I did it and you didn't deserve it. It doesn't matter whether you're black, whether you're Jewish, whether you're a smurf, it doesn't matter. If I punch you in the face, I have I have transgressed upon you and the law should be the law. To to assume to give people special rights and privileges uh, because I didn't like you because of your ideology. Well, well, what if I didn't like you because you you did something twisted with my sister? Is is that any different than not liking you for a screwed up ideology that allows you to to lie to people and and to mislead them and to to tout on this this uh, supremacism? And what difference does it make? And and this of course is where I have the problem with the whole hate speech thing. It it just shuts people and now. The radical leftists are, are, are taking this. As soon as you give them an inch, they end up taking 10 miles. And now if you, if you just share your Christian values that, that, that gay marriage to you is a sin, now it doesn't say that, that two people can't go off and live and do whatever they want to do. All I'm saying is to me it's a sin. But that's hate speech now in California, by the way. That's hate speech. Well, there's no, no point crying about it to them because they don't care. We, we've got to, we've got to come up with a. And this is what I'm talking. Why I'm so disappointed and sick of it. And please, someone pay me off. Someone. I just want to get out of it because I am sick of screaming. I want political action. I want political action. I want people skydiving naked with pink ribbons tied around their privates with big banners saying "Expose Jewish power." Expose no, Jewish power. I, I don't know if I go that far. Right. Well, you know what I'm, but what I'm trying to say is we ain't seeing any of it, and only the left. The left is going to have to save the right, because all the right does all day is bitch and whine and carrot. <laughs> but they can't. This is why, this is why that this has been they handed can. to the left. Why aren't there 50 people right now, Mike, at the front of the, uh, Tom, at the anti-defamation of Benai Brith in New York? Where's our brave warriors, our, our sons and daughters of George Washington? Where are the brave warriors? Where are well, they? At the yeah, front of the talking, ADL. You're, you're talking to one of them. I mean, a couple right. times well, in if my I life. Was there, bro, if I was no. there, I'd be with you in peace, coordinating with the New York counterterrorism office, saying we will be handing out flyers on a major national security risk at the front of the ADL. We're looking for responses from the ADL and blah, blah, blah. And we do it by the book, and nobody does a damn thing. I'm Nothing. with you. You get here, I'm with you. Side by side. I Let's bled, go. bro. I bled. I said, "Let's fight. Let's go. I'll be an example. I'll be the wild colonial boy." I had advertising <laughs> and marketing. I knew what I was going to say, and I got crucified. And I thought, "Well, this will motivate a few people." Nothing. They don't even read my damn brilliant analysis of the legislation. I'm just mentally ill, nut. I am going mentally ill because no one will do anything except bitch and whine about the Jews, the horrible Jews. Now, uh, you know, uh, I, I get you on that. I, yeah, I understand. I understand how you feel on that. I really do. Uh, and, and I can sympathize with you because I do feel the same way. I kind of feel like I'm in this, this situation here where a good majority of the people that I, uh, that I consort with are, are conservatives and they've been indoctrinated. So I feel like I'm banging my head into a wall. Oh, the cowards. The cowards. Yeah, and, I have, and I have Jewish That's friends. Look at, Dr., look at Dr. Alan Sobrowski. Or you can't tell me we have, and he's just one example of, of so many, right? What a wonderful guy! He's you know he, he's got he's Jewish. Do what because he's Jewish? Do we hate him? No, no. But he's honest, and 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 he and he calls a spade a spade. He calls it for what it is, and and really there is a hardcore element uh, of the society that really is is engineering this. The masses of the people. It doesn't matter what religion they are. It doesn't matter what culture they are. The majority of the people are just mind-controlled sheeple. And, and that goes for, this is why I, I try and say, you know, 
I'm I'm no greater friend to the Jewish people than than I mean I know that they castigate me pretty hard, but I don't think that they understand that if things keep going the way it's going, there's only going to be one of two results. One, they're going to win, or two, can you tell me what what two is? You know what two is coming. There's going to be a backlash. And if that backlash ever hits, and this is what Dr. Alan Sobrowski said, if the American people ever truly wake up to who is behind 9-11, they will wipe Israel off the map. I can't. This <laughs> too late. Well, I, no, I, I, no, I don't <laughs> think it's ever too late, man, because you know what? I have faith in God. And, and, but I'm hoping it doesn't come to that. Well, I'm, ho- well, I'm hoping well, it doesn't come to a World War III. You've just been backdoored entirely by the Israeli high technology sector, by all the traders who need to be shocked for treason. We don't need to even have a trial because they've admitted all their treason quite publicly. And until the U.S. military, and I hope it's matters, um, starts, you know, it, it just needs to go to martial law and the roundups need to start. But the roundups need to be of the right people. And I fear... Um, that with the Israeli first is sort of battling, well, I hope it's a battle with Mattis and the U.S. military to some extent, um, that we will see the right people rounded up and publicly executed. And to use that language, public executed, that's pretty strong language. But I don't know how else you do. This has cost the lives of millions of people by low lives within government of various apparent uh, tastes, various apparent political persuasions. They're all yep. totally compromised sexually pedophilia, yep. uh, prostitution, drug use, massive drug use. I mean, Clinton is a hardcore cocaine addict, and his wife probably dabbles with her little friend, Uma, what's her face as well, you know, has a bit of a party there. Um, no, I, I'd just we, like to put a disclaimer out here. He hasn't been convicted of any such thing. This is our opinion, but oh, well, the, I, 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 would, I would happen to concur with Nichols. that opinion. Larry Nichols even says it. Larry Nichols even says it, right? He's no, a hardcore I, 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 I know, but after one threatened lawsuit from somebody, I'm not going to, Lenny Posner, oh, I'm not going to mention, you know. Are you kidding? Uh, you should have oh, the yeah. best news for RBN, imagine. Would you? <laughs> Do All right, man. We'll be right back after a few words from our sponsors. Brendan O'Connell. Resurrect the Republic. Truth Radio Broadcast on RBN. Flooding down in Texas. I love that. I had fun recording that. That's an awesome song. I miss Stevie Ray Vaughan. Ah, anyway. Oh, yeah, he died O'Connell. in Spain. He died in Spain. Didn't he have an overdose? No, was it? No, no. Who am I thinking? No, of? he he died in a in a crash. He uh, he swapped places with Eric Clapton. Um, I believe it was a helicopter. He swapped places with Eric Clapton because he needed oh. to get to where he was going sooner, and and oh, uh, he crashed. Yeah, man, I'm it was such a shame. Of, um, I'm thinking of um, uh, lead guitar for Thin Lizzy. He died in Spain, apparently, yeah. of a had a heart failure. Oh, yeah. Gary Moore. Gary Moore. Gary Moore. Yeah. All right, now, uh, folks out there, if you want to call in, you can. Uh, 1-800-313-9443 if you'd like to make a comment, ask a question, uh, add some input. Um, of course, I, I, I did get some of the trolls already sending me messages. Uh, <laughs> got a couple goose steppers out there. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Guys, do you not understand that I am a paleo-conservative? 
please go Google paleoconservative and, 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 and learn what that's about. Limited government, folks. Limited <laughs> government, folks. Get it. Okay? I'm sorry. I love the German people. Don't like large totalitarian regimes. Just not my thing. That's all. No big deal. Yeah, no on. offense to you. I keep telling them. Move on. People don't realize one of my best friends I've never met, known him for 15 years online. I trust him with my life. Mm -hmm. He is a hardcore, goose-stepping national <laughs> socialist. As mm -hmm. he said, Brendan, listen up. All right? I am a national socialist and a student of Julius Evola and sacred tradition. I am not a Hitler groupie. And when you meet those highly intelligent national socialists, you will hear them rip Hitler to bits for all his mistakes. What you've got is Hitler groupies. They're groupies. They're looking for a rock star. They're looking for yeah, a hero. I, I agree. I agree. Right? And you've got to understand, I respect people's points of view as long as they do not advocate execution, slaughter, or violence. You may lose no, your temper. Absolutely. We understand that. We get angry. We've all said stuff. But these clowns, I call them Hitler groupies, all right? They can't look objective. Ah, I hate the brakes. We'll be right back, folks. Sorry about that, uh, Brendan. We'll be right back. Resurrect the Republic Truth Radio broadcast on RBN into the second hour with Brendan O'Connell. Hate speech, an exclusive interview with the handsome traveler. <laughs> to the Republic Broadcasting Network because you can handle the truth. Resurrect the Republic, Truth Radio Broadcast on RBN, the Republic Broadcasting Network because you can handle the truth. Welcome, welcome back. Second hour with Brendan O'Connell. It is never a dull moment with the handsome traveler. <laughs> I like that title, by the way. <laughs> so we're titling this, this interview, and I don't want to make anybody think that I think Brendan's handsome, but <laughs> hate speech, an exclusive interview with the handsome traveler. Anyway, uh, Brendan, I know that we, we've kind of we've jumped all around uh, but I really want to get back to uh, the situation that was really the most important with you, which was this situation in in court and um, this whole this, this whole trial aspect. And uh, if you could please, uh, if we don't get completely misdirected and going down a rabbit hole and trails that we often do, <laughs> if you can bring us back to that, because I have all of this stuff up on my computer here. I'm looking at your broken arm. Can you please tell us a little bit more of the depth of that? What happened? Uh, in terms of the broken arm, or in terms of the um, well, the whole the, thing, really. Yeah, let's 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 take it from start to finish. Where you think it, you know, we should go with this? Uh, well, what I, I really, really need to do is make a video. That's what I need to do because I failed to lay it out, and then I can put my detractors, of which there are many, to rest. Mainly because I don't suffer <laughs> people. I suffer lunatics like Luke McGee and other lunatics like you know Daniel Walker of Activist News Australia. And I know you don't want the R B N used as an attack dog, but these people are causing yeah. me a lot of. Um, these people, you know, put up things like, uh, it's Friday night, let's stab kikes on their Discord. And then demand oh. I come. And, then, that's Daniel Walker. Then he demands I come and I come onto his Discord. Why won't I come on his Discord? Well, I didn't well, say anything. Because you're I, an idiot. That's why. You know, I have yeah. to agree with you with that. That's just, yeah. that's just idiocy. All right. All right. It's worse than idiocy. And I'm trying to get to the high court. So these people can't work it out. 
All right. All it's right. like even Jeff Rents. I appear on Jeff Rents. I don't work with Jeff Rents. But I said to Jeff, I don't like the UFO stuff when I'm going for the high court. And he said, oh, no, I completely understand, Bruno. I yeah. said, I don't want David Icke or Jeff Rents on my resume when we're trying yeah. to get to the high court. No lizards, no flat earth, no, yeah. And said, yeah, I completely understand. <laughs> And it's no problem. I'm trying yeah. to keep it clean for a political solution in some measure and not getting much help along the way by people like Daniel Walker or Luke McGee, who believes that all F-A-G-G-O-T-S's, all homosexuals who he calls F-A-G-G-O-T-S's, are pedophiles. All. And then he wonders why he's brought the fourth group. So just before we go on, at some no, stage... I'm going to stay off that subject. Right. But what I'm trying to say is... You need two brain cells and understand that I don't have a problem. My problem is I put up with people because I'm desperate. That's why. So I try to steer them in the right direction. And what I'm trying to do is I tried to form alliances with people who I clearly could not form alliances with and would never form alliances except I was desperate. Those right. times have changed to some degree. So now I'm getting real fussy. And if you can't add two and two and use tactics in your head, for instance, just on legislation, if you are a raving Nazi who wants to kill little Jew babies, would it not make tactical sense to shut your mouth, erase the black text of swastika you put on your forehead, and dress as a gay whale advocate and infiltrate and get your message across? No, don't give them any ideas. Don't give them any ideas. Yeah, but what I'm trying to say is these, <laughs> the, these, these clowns come to me, and then they go, oh, he's not working. No, I'm not working with you. Yeah, I'm not. I'm like you. I'm a basic. I'm just saying basically yeah. a paleoconservative libertarian. Big fan of Bill Cooper. That's basically what I am. All right, yeah. but I'm a Christian too. You look after the poor, the weak, the people with broken legs. Okay, but you also don't make it so comfortable that they can just sit on their ass all day and do nothing. So right. there's middle grounds for these things. I am about political solutions and i've had to have a hard look i made big mistakes i would really underrated the response i was going to get when i did what i did but if we can't have rational discussions without it's friday night let's stab kikes memes who daniel thinks is funny um yeah. he didn't put that up that was on his discord stuff i can't be around nuts when people are talking about free speech because i am not a free speech advocate at all i am for you're only going to get what you're willing to die for so if you're not willing to die to solve problems such as criminals in your midst who are trying to kill you and make you sterile with vaccines and shove you into smart cities where you will be tended to by robots, who, and then you will humanely die, maybe at 90, maybe they'll be kind. You can die at 90 or 110, but you will be sterile and you will not have children because that is the plan. So I'm about fighting for the right up into death or broken bones or bloodied, bloodied faces or, or, or being poor and stuck in a refrigerated box in KL, and there are worse places to be. Um, I'm about simply common sense stuff that your mum understands, your mother understands. And if you can't do that, then please don't contact me. Please. If you believe all Jews must die and the only way to deal with them is to, to gas them, and then tell me in the next breath that Germany was way too civilised to ever do something like that. But they did euthanise 17,000 mentally and physically handicapped people. They did have Einsatzgruppen and Sonderkommando, special detachment units, killing men, women and children in highly organised fashion on the Eastern Front. Mm -hmm. And it's not a tit for tat, oh, they did this and they did that. That was no, a no, national no. socialist policy of government, of government. And that scares the living hell out of me. So if you want that in the United States, have the decency to pack your bags and fly to Sweden. If you want a benevolent king dictator, right, that, that I'm willing to support you and say, look, that that is a, is a rational argument that that is a way to run a country in a theocracy. That's OK. You can have that. But it's not my way. Give me the American flag, sawn off shotgun, a rock and chair and a dog, because I want that. I want the Marlboro Man. I want one country on this planet. Just one which says you matter. And, and just to be left alone. Isn't that, yeah, isn't I that, mean, wouldn't that be a great idea? And then when the rest of the world grows up and becomes adults, maybe the pilot light of liberty contained within the United States for all its sins, for all its sins, built on the backs of the massacre and ethnic cleansing of Native Americans. That's a fact. Native Americans weren't perfect either. They had their problems, but that's the fact. But, if, but there's just one America. So if you want to Hitler and you want to go to Nuremberg rallies with torches and goose step, yeah. that's okay. I'm not even judging no, you. you. Just pack your bags. Pack your bags and fly to Europe or fly wherever you want to go. History, the history of the world has, has, has 
always been that a and you know we could argue over the, the higher advancement of civilization and all of that but you know the that whole Native American thing always gets in my craw too because my wife is Native American I know a lot of Native Americans I'm friends with a lot of Native Americans in fact Lavoy Finnicum who was shot and killed and myself we were we were trying to advocate for Native American land rights uh, in the Northeast up there or in the Northwest um, but you know this this narrative that they were all one people and and they were all they they killed and slaughtered and enslaved each other and then yes. along came the Europeans. You also had European societies, or or at least with, with genetics, that were among them for a very long time. You also have a recent discovery in the northeast of uh, a civilization of uh, uh, European DNA. I uh, forget that, that what they're called. Uh, they just found a... Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent, but, you know, a lot of these things that we've been taught about this, this, this horrible thing, like we need to go back and past and fix these things and heal these things. Look, I believe in advocating for people's rights today. Today, let, we, we could rewind the clock 100, 200 years, 300 years. I keep hearing this and, you know, reparations and all this other stuff. I think what's more important is we advocate for people's rights here today. What, what's going on today is important what's going on in palestine to me i don't care if you're muslim if you're christian if you're wh whatever religion you are and this is the this, you notice how they always bring the narrative that palestine it's always about the muslims against the jews i know christians christians who have lost their homes to these illegal settlements and and other christians that come from the united states in, from their gated communities and say, well, really, you know what you need to do? You just need to be quiet about it and let Israel handle it. Oh, really? Let me roll into your gated community and kick you out of your house, and let's say we're claiming it for Cochise. How would you like it? Pretty okay. simple. Simple yeah. concept. It's not, not much to debate about it, is it? No, oh, we it's are just debating. morality. Holy cow, it's just morality. Well, we need to understand, and, and this is why we need a liaison. We need a common ground where people, and it doesn't matter who you are. You could be a transgender, pink haired, uh, commie, you could, whatever. But you understand that. But the point is, the point is, you I know, understand I know what you're saying. that within the American Constitution is the freedom to be a commie. Within the American Constitution is the freedom to be a Christian. Bill Cooper, I love it when he says, freedom is all it's about. Without freedom, you can't be a Christian. You can't be a Buddhist. You can't drive from here to Oregon. You can't own a donut shop. Freedom, it's it. There's nothing more to talk about. Freedom, freedom, freedom. As long as you are not impinging on someone else. As long as you are well, a basic common sense adult. That's the problem. That's it. That's the problem. So you're not going to the commies advocates. out there. You, you're not going to have the freedom under the U.S. Constitution to be a commie. So let's all get together on some common common sense ground. Two plus two equals four. What goes up must come down. And U.S. has all the high tech. Boot out these Israeli first. Boot them out. Execute them. Put them in Riker Island for life. I don't care. Deal with it, U.S. military. Deal with it now yes. and let the yes. United States dominate the planet for those who want the yeah. assistance of the United States. If you want the assistance, put your hand up and say, we love Liberty too. Can we please have an aircraft carrier parked off our coast? Put your hand up, put your money in to help trade. <laughs> Just put your hand up and say, yes, we are pro-business, pro, pro Why don't they make their own aircraft carrier? Well, no, no, no. You make up your mind, buddy, what you want, because I want a powerful U.S. military. I want it so damn powerful no one can uh, yeah, touch it. Yeah, but I want our powerful U.S. military to protect our borders and the rest of the world can take care of themselves. You don't. No, 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 no way. We're going to disagree very strongly here. It's okay. They can't it's okay. I love the... disagreeing with you anyway, because, you know, it, it's all good. <laughs> no, I just said, put your hand up and say, do you want in? If you want NATO, pay for it. Malaysia, you want you want you want to yeah, the Straits of Malacca, and you want to trade? Put your hand up. Park your aircraft carrier here, please. Singapore, Hong Kong, free trade. You want trade? You want you want to be on board? <laughs> Just put your hand up. Sign the contract. America rocks. America rules because it's freedom, connectivity, and business. But if you want to run a pretend autocratic, pretend democracy, if you want a benevolent dictatorship, go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. Yeah, I don't, Let people. I'm, Choose in. Let them sign the contract on the dotted line. 
Sign the contract. We love America because you no longer got Israeli first, a scumbag Zionist, Jewish power, crazed sociopaths running the country now. Because then people will love America like the Muslim, Arab business people who love America. You don't need Israel to keep the Muslims in line in the Middle East. They love America. They love America. Now Donald Trump's destroyed it on purpose because he works for BB Netanyahu. And that's the problem. So now we have no moderate middle ground. We have the destruction of the moderate middle ground. Now we have the polarization that BB and Lord Jacob Rothschild and the Royal Institute of International Affairs want. The communists, worldwide communists with flowers. And it's coming if people don't start being ruthless. And when I say ruthless, I mean stop trying to be friends with people. Make your claim. Here's what I'm about. Step one. That's what I'm about. That's what I'm about. That's what I'm about. Are you about this too? We need some ruthless action. And you learn it from the left and you learn it from Saul Alinsky, rules for radicals. We're here to win. We're not here to be nice and bleat on like 13-year-old schoolgirls at a freaking lunchtime meeting. Over no, I've, the I've said that. I've said that for a long time. If we don't get hip to uh, what they're – and they're using it against us, folks. The rules for radicals, they are using it against us every no, day. No, we no, we no, need no, to get no, hip. Saul Alinsky. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can't disagree with that. I really can't. I really can't. So, Brendan, look what you do. You you um, you um, you um delete comments off your thing. Yeah, I do. I'm not going to debate someone whether, uh, uh, you know, they just bring up garbage. And, like, a national socialist, Nazis, they're garbage. I'm not here to debate you. Get out of the way. I'll probably shoot you if I get half a chance. All right? I'm not, you don't interest me. I'm about the American Constitution. I'm like you. I'm a limited government paleoconservative by nature. If you're against that, you're my enemy. I don't care who yeah. you are. Yeah. It's really not that hard of a concept to, to really get just... Really? Get out. Just get out. leave us alone. I'm in Malaysia right now. Do you think there's true democracy in Malaysia? There's no true democracy in Malaysia. It's an autocratic pretend two-party system. Does it sound familiar? All right, but it's blatantly pretend, and everyone accepts it. All right, that's the way it is. All right, I don't care. I feel safe here, I feel good here. That's no problem. In Iran, I felt great. I felt truly free. Everyone was relaxed. The point is, for some people, that will work, and that's okay. That's yours, but not America. So if you don't like it, why don't you leave it? Well, we've got to get Israel and Jewish power out of the system. So American Jews and everyone else can sit and say, we agree with that constitution. And we're willing to fight and we're willing to die for it. And if I don't care where you're from, if you don't hold those values, if you don't kiss the ground of the United States and say, thank God the United States exists, get out. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And and we need to get we need to purge also. You realize how many American law enforcement have been trained in Israel? I, I didn't even realize this until a couple months ago. I was really digging into it. I've heard about it and but I really started looking into it. It's a little frightening. Now, and somebody just sent me an article. Cops go to wrong house, kill innocent man, receive a free pass from local grand jury. What is that? That sounds like what's going on over there. These people are out of their minds. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a complete people. detachment from morality. Yeah, it's happening in Australia. <sighs> Look, I'll I'm, I'm, I'm bring this up. You don't understand, too, there's something you don't understand. The amount of drugs being used by law enforcement. Most of them are off their heads on dexamphetamine and crystal meth. I'm sorry, they are. I know intimately people in the police, and they tell me straight out. And I've seen behaviour by the Western Australian police, my home police, which is out of their minds, because they're off their heads on drugs. <sighs> you don't... A university law professor, Robert, it's a famous case in Western Australia. It took him eight years to get justice. He's walking along the street. There was a man lying in the gutter. He's a law professor. He's with his girlfriend, who was a lecturer at the major university of Western Australia. That is the top university in Western Australia, world renowned. Okay, this is the law professor, Robert Cunningham. He looks down at the guy and says, are you okay? Two young police officers walk along, and I believe they're ex-military. I haven't confirmed it, but they walk along and tell him to get moving. And he said, excuse me, I'm just, I have a duty of care. I'm asking him if this gentleman's all right. The guy said, I told you to get moving. And they didn't realise they had a law professor. He said, excuse me, don't speak to me like that. Next minute, they're face down, male and female, university law lecturers and professors, handcuffed. And when they were handcuffed face down, you know what they did? They tasered them both while handcuffed face down on the ground. White university professionals. It was unbelievable. Those you know two what? police... 
protected at every level, at every stage of the investigation. They were protected. Why? <laughs> Finally, they got justice. Finally, they got a million dollar payout. It took white upper class professionals eight years to get justice. That's my home state. And that is what is spreading everywhere. And you know why? Because they're off their heads and they're working via that clique. Like when Michael Rupert was asked for the LA police, do you want to protect CIA drug trafficking, which is really Israeli drug trafficking? So they're all linked. MI6, Mossad, CIA, it's all linked. Yeah, but it's not KGB. them. There's even decent people in the Mossad. There's even no, rational people. Of course there are. But no, they're, they're are. Rothschild agents. They're agents. It's the private Iran-Contra intelligence network of organized crime, drug trafficking, drug money laundering, casinos, and the weapons trade. Yeah. Yeah. But we know that... And, and here's the thing with these, these agencies... They're compartmentalized. They're compartmentalized to the point where you have, and let me bring the FBI up for, for an example. You have teams that are dedicated to hunting out and destroying serial killers, right? And then you have the HRT team who shoots Vicki Weaver in the face and shoots her son in the back and, uh, and all of that other stuff. So this compartmentalized to a point where you have very wonderful. I've met people from, from the FBI that were good guys. And then you have these, the, and the BLM is another example, the Bureau of Land Management. You got this, this, this agent who has his little clique of Gestapo or, or Soviet commissars, whatever you want to call them. And they're operating completely outside the law where on the other side of the country, you have a BLM office with a couple of folks sitting in it with blue jeans and a hat on. And they're just, they're just watching stuff. So I get this, man. It's, it's, it's really frustrating because we, we as a people, we start painting them all, and they're really not all guilty. And it's frustrating because they've compartmentalized things to the point where, yeah, there's, there's, there's good in all of these agencies and there's bad. But at what point, when you're sitting in one of these agencies, do you not say, I can see what's going on and this is wrong, this is immoral? Ah, it's frustrating. We'll be back on the other side of the break with Brendan O'Connell, Resurrect the Republic, Truth Radio Broadcast. This is the most transparent administration in history. Folks, I'm on the line with Brendan O'Connell in Malaysia. And if you want, please feel free to call in waiting 1-800-313-9443. Um, please make it about subject matter and perhaps direct a question or comment to Brendan. That would be appreciated. Uh, for those of you that are in the chat room, we do have finally our new computer on the way. And when it gets here, I'll be able to be into the chat room and do all that other stuff that I used to be able to do uh, that we're unable to do for various uh, uh, reasons that Brendan experienced right before our broadcast today. All day today, when I wasn't doing anything really very important, the computer was fine. And then right before the broadcast, and Brendan and I are trying to share emails back and forth, everything falls apart. It takes three minutes to open a page, all kinds of interesting technical difficulties and you know we have these these companies that are really moving against the truth um and and why i shared that segment earlier with this this thing with fighting online uh, anti-semitism this guy was talking about artificial intelligence that goes out and seeks out all of the criticism of israel they call anti-semitism seeks out all the criticism and and they compile it and then they have Brendan, you can tell us what they have to combat this with, what they're attacking us with. Um, look, uh, the technology now is so great. I don't even know who I'm talking to. Are these people for real? Most of the people you're talking to, if you want to be honest, if you become a bit of a target, um, you will just find that either uh, FBI, ADL, Yeshiva military academies, 
um, just fake personalities, or you know, you're on you're on Facebook. You do realise that it's the year 2018. They have massive AI social networking machines that can sound human. Who are you even talking to? So you expend all this energy all day thinking you're having an effect, and the great thing is you have a no effect, which is why I've said I'm going to be talking with John Wilson. I hope he lives. Right, moved in the highest circles of the Australian Communist Party. Never an official communist. More left, trade union, blue collar, workers' rights. Stood his ground. Worked at the highest levels. Went out with Joan Finger, Jewish Australian Communist royalty. Friends with Aaron Laurie, Jewish Australian royalty in the communist movement. You want to talk and hear from the person, as you said, Brennan. You open my eyes to this side of things. See, I'm old trade union, and I'm watching. I watched. Donald Trump used Saul Alinsky perfectly to win that campaign. He was a student of Saul Alinsky. Everything he did was straight out of Rules for Radicals. He said, you've opened my eyes. Once the means of production and the means of transaction are fully, and we're heading that way, we're pretty close, fully in the hands of Israel, particularly Israel, who is a son of the city of London between him, Putin, uh, President Xi of China, okay, and Trump now. And Hillary, it doesn't matter. They're both, they're both ruled by the same people. Once they get things in their power and Israel becomes the center of the world with the capital Jerusalem, greater Israel, it becomes the new America. They'll collapse the United States into a Putin-style quasi-benevolent dictatorship. And a lot of people are going to love that, apparently. But Israel will be the center of the planet and it will be liberal. It will have gay rights and we'll have all this beautiful stuff, everything that America was supposed to be, where freedom reigned, where as long as you didn't upset other people or impinge on the rights of other people, you could be you. That was unique. Well, they're going to shift that to, to greater Israel. That's what they're building right now. And once those means of production and the means of transaction are fully in the hands, the cryptocurrencies, the emerging new world order of Israeli high technology, robotics and drones, the Internet of Things and smart cities, Gulags for the Woken Goy and for all the Jews. You'll be, share, you'll be sharing that with heaps of Jews too, trust me. They're going to shove anyone who opens their mouth into these smart gulags and they're going to have lots of little tricks, Tavistock Institute, psychology, forensic psychology, forensic psychiatry tricks into how to limit your freedom and how to pat you on the head kindly. They're not going to execute you. Maybe they will the odd person. They're going to teach you like Pavlov's dog how to behave. You're going to have your social score, your bank's not going to work if you've been bad. You're not going to be able to fly. It's all been tested in China, and it's all coming out now. If we don't act quickly and get a common ground happening, it's over. Because when the robots come, your 50 cal ain't going to cut it. Your free man on the paper land, free man on the land paperwork ain't going to cut it. All the best intentions in the world are not going to cut it if people don't just wake up. Because a lot of people are woken up. But get out of bed. Get out of bed. And have a look at my case and the paperwork I've put online with transcripts and evidence and proof. There are a, a background foundation now of people within the military and intelligence community that see what's happening. And they have got to feel confident to move. They cannot feel confident. We have a bunch of morons who believe Q and Donald Trump's 5D chess is the answer to all. If we don't do something very soon... Oh, don't we've got me started kids. with Q. Oh, oh, look, if we don't move soon... All right, it's, it's, this is not an Alex Jones prediction. Oh, it's all over. Blah, blah, blah. It, nah. this is, it's over. It's over. The ro tell it to the robot. Tell it to the robot. This is what they called mastering the human domain. And we, and Lori Anderson and I, we went down this, this uh, we reported on this. As a matter of fact, we were a couple of the first ones to actually report on the root aspects of the technology. Uh, and the military, what they were doing with, with mastering the human domain um, and it's part of social, uh, logistic, mapping. It just, it's insane. I, I have to sh share that with you. I'll, I'll send it over to you one day. Anyway, we'll be right back after a few words from our sponsors. Brendan O'Connell and Resurrect the Republic with Tom Lacavara Stewart.
Resurrect the Republic Truth Radio Broadcast. I'm your host, Tom Lacavara Stewart, on the line with Brendan O'Connell. All right, where were we? I, those commercial breaks always, always uh, with my Lyme disease, always scatter my brain. Uh, yeah, about um, getting getting uh, somewhat organized in the United States, being significantly organized, yes. precious, being precious, and that if you don't like it, leave it. There's just just let's just have one country which values the individual, which says. The sovereign, the boss, is the people. The people are the boss and not the other way around. That's what the American Constitution says outright. No ifs, no buts. It's the only country in the world. And if you don't like it, you want to, you read Julius Civola's Sacred Tradition. That's great reading. In fact, he makes a lot of valid points. That's, that's Adolf Hitler's number one author. It's also Stephen Bannon's number one author. So if that's what you believe, I don't know, move to Europe, join the European Union. They have similar ideas. That's okay. I'm not even trying to be smart. It's okay but not the United States. So the white nationalist move, just pack up and, you know, be honest and move, move somewhere else. Just go. There's only the United States. So as soon as Americans start taking it seriously, and when I mean seriously, you don't have to pick up a gun. If you can't even engage in the political process and write a well-written, studied letter, that's you actually study the art of letter writing and lobbying a politician, you study it. You don't just put exclamation marks and bold and underline and ah, no one's going to read it. You need to know how to write a legal letter to a politician. You need to follow it up. It's a technique. It's a study. You need to study it. And the left are kings at this. The left are the kings. You need to study Saul Alinsky rules for radicals. You need to study when you have a meeting. You know, in the old days, people I know, you know, you got out of line at the meeting, you were dragged out the back and half beaten to death because to maintain discipline, it's a war. They need discipline. You've got to stop infiltration, the grubs, the rats, the informants. All right? You need to, when you have a meeting, you need to say everyone will be photographed at the door with their driver's license or passport. And people have said, I'm not going to go to that. I said, good, because you're not a player. You're not for real. If I saw someone do that who was sane and rational and discussing their points of view and value and said, look, I want to start something, but we want to identify people because we're not going to be infiltrated. I love that person. I want to join with that person because they got brains. They might survive. So we've got to start getting very serious. But also very, at the same time, you can't get too too crazy about it. You have to organise with your local sheriff, your local state counterterrorism. You've got to form relationships. The FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, you are a proud American and you're worried about this national security issue, which is Israel and the racial supremacist state, ethically and morally, the racial supremacist state of Israel which just reinvigorated the fact it's a Jewish state. It just did it officially again. I mean, I have quotes from the deputy defense minister, best friends with Avigor Liebman, the Russian spy pretending to be Jewish in Israel, best friends with Benjamin Netanyahu. And he says, I just want to expound on Jewish values. This was reported in the Israeli press. And he actually says, I want to push uh, Israel to, to expound its Jewish values. And even the soul of a Jewish homosexual is higher than a non-Jew. That's a quote from the deputy defense minister. Now, to the untrained eye, that appears to be not that relevant. That's gold. I can now take that to a politician and force them into a corner. Do you believe in this? Do you believe in this? Do you believe in this? Oh, yes. Uh, Israel's the only democracy in the region. I say, oh, okay, really? Here you go. Here's some quotes. Do people not understand the leverage that Israel gives us every single day? And we appear so stupid, so utterly incompetent. We can't even use those gifts. Well, even their top rabbis debate whether you can kill a non-Jew and take their organs. That's gold. And no one appears to be able to use it effectively in the political sense. That's bad. Man, that shows we are a bunch of incompetent twits. Over to you. Or, or, you know, it means that the mainstream media is, is uh, the CFR-controlled mockingbird media is really in control. I no, mean, nothing to do with the media. Well, nothing no, the because they're, they're not covering these things, so we do, right? But we do, and then we get constantly... You saw what happened. I mean, it, it's almost like, Brendan, I had a channel. I had millions of views, tens of thousands of subscribers, and, and I would have covered something like that, and it would have gotten out to a lot of people. And... And what did they do? Boom. Gone. 
Just well, wake me up. that's fine. But that's just covering. That's good. You know what you do then? You realize that covering's not enough, though, Mike. We have lots of covering there, Tom. Yeah, Tom, think, about, think about who you're talking to, though. Hold on a second. Right. Well, 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 on that thing, we can whine about it, and you're talking to someone who whines yeah, a lot. But again, but, think about who you're talking to. When I cover something, for instance, if it's important enough, what I ended up doing twice out of my life, and ended up, I ended up losing a year of my life in prison because I thought that there was an event that was important enough to show up, boots on the ground, stand at the door, ready to go, ready to, okay. to do whatever. So, I mean, well, you're, you're, you're not talking to the average alternative media talk show host. <laughs> yes. Now, let me be critical, and you can be critical. Go ahead. No, believe, that's cool. No one can be more critical. I believe that was a waste of time uh, in the classic sense. Of course, it's all God's plan, so you're going to learn stuff from that. Uh, you're going to, you know, it, it's all God's plan, in my opinion. But what you should have done was engaged in the political process in a long-term plan. So they always tell us the end is near, the economy is going to collapse, and we're all doomed. We're all yeah, doomed. that was tried. In this, in this specific case that you're speaking of, that was tried. It was tried for years. It was a, it, the, it, it's such a long story, and you probably don't yeah, have no, the details was, of this. Uh, it wasn't tried because you do it this way. Israel is a national security risk that is stealing hundreds of billions of dollars out of the United States. That's how you get their attention. They don't care about Palestinian rights, the people at the top. But you start explaining how this little poxy state over in the Middle East, via its Rothschild private intelligence networks, is sucking the fruit of the US taxpayers' high technology sector that it funds in DARPA and the Pentagon budget. It is sucking that technology. And all of that stuff that should be in the hands of American corporations working for the benefit and the privilege of the American taxpayer and others who choose to hop on board. It's you know, I, would, I would get behind I would get behind a class action suit. Uh, but here's the problem with lobbying our politicians. The majority of the politicians in Washington sign pledges. They, they receive money from uh, lobbying. That's from APAC. So they're, they're already, they don't hear you. They turn their, that you, you can, I, I've done this. I've gone and talked to them. I've even talked to, Brendan, I've talked to, I've talked to people who have it, representatives who have agreed with you, who have agreed with me and told me it would be career suicide if they acted upon it. They have no, right, no stop, they have no stop, testicular fortitude. Stop. Stop, stop. So now what's the next thing you do? So you didn't win in five minutes. You tried. I give up. You, it's just a long-term plan. If, quote-unquote, Jewish power of the Jews, imagine if they said 5,000 years ago, oh, well, around the desert, I don't know, I give up. You know, so <laughs> they, got they, don't give up. they never give up. They stay in the same spot. Yeah, like Chinese water torture. All right, you get rid of that politician. You ask someone to stand for Congress, they look at you like you're from Mars, but I can't stand for Congress. The freaking republic was fought and died for so you could stand for Congress, you moron. You moron, stand for Congress. You fundraise, right. you organize, you be ruthless, you study Saul Alinsky, you study the Communist Manifesto, and you learn from the damn best. You study psychology, you study political science, you study, 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 and then you begin the operation. And if you're not, if you can't win in five minutes, you say, I'll oh, give up, I'll give up. Ah, oh, for God, die then. Let me well, join I, the other team. I never give, give up. up. I don't believe well, in giving up. People have got to get organized in the middle ground to understand this principle. This principle unites everyone. When the robots come, there will be no debate. You will get on the self-driving truck designed in Israel and manufactured in China, and you will get on it, and you will shut your stinking mouth, and you will get put in that smart city gulag, which will be very nice. Well, when, when, you, say, nice. when you say you redirect it, because I, I, can, I can assure you that the people that I, uh, I spend my time with and myself uh, will not be. Mike, don't give me that. happen. Not going to happen. Don't give me that. I'm not going to get on that truck. You know dude, who I are the worst? Off, I faced off with 250 FBI, bro. You're talking to the wrong dude. Tell, it, dude, tell it to the robot. You don't get it. Yeah, tell I don't, it, I don't care. I'll, I'll fight the robot until I'm dead then. then why you know am I what? talking to you, Mike? Why am I talking to you? I thought we were going to talk about people doing productive, smart no, things. No, no. I, I understand that, but when you're, 
but when you look say, look at my balls, everyone, look at my balls. We do, we need less balls and more smarts. How much balls yeah, does I, I have? I understand what you're saying, but when you say you're just going to get on the train, you're going to well, that's 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 right. not going to happen. So let's well, let's find the solution. Thomas, I'm, you I'm are going to get on the train, Thomas. You will get on the smart driving truck when it comes. You will get on it. I assure you, you will, because you can't. When the robots come, you're not going to be dealing with a human. You're going to be dealing with the robots, and we might as well end this conversation now if you don't get that. Because no, why I, I do get that. I do get that. But right, so I, I stop do. the balls, bull, bull, bull dust, please. I'm tough. It's not about being tough, dude. I don't doubt your your testicular. No, fortitude. it's not. It, no, it's not about being tough. It's not even about testicular fortitude. I'm determined, which is why I That's do what I do every okay. single day. But you just said, my boys, my lads, my gang, I ain't going to cop it. I just told you, when the robots come, you won't have a choice. Your 50 cal ain't going to save you. And oh, hoping for the just, testic... Oh, there's you just things that I can't say on a live broadcast Thomas, with you that if I Thomas, could have had this... Uh, Thomas, Thomas, do you understand what happens when the robots come? Do you have a clue what that means, the drone technology? Do you tell me if you have a clue so I can just hang up now and move uh, on? And never no, I, I, I do have a clue, but let me explain something right. to you so that you understand. No, is, oh, we oh, have oh, people oh. here right now. We have people here right now. And I, 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 can't, I can't really go into depth on a live broadcast. They're very close. The reason that you resonate with me when you talk about Madison, you talk about these other things that are going on, the reason that this resonates with me is because I know for a fact that there, there are things going on behind the scenes that are, go, that are going exactly as you say. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going it, to, what, what you're saying could happen, I don't believe is going to happen because the determination of the people that are involved, and I'm not talking about a bunch of cowboys. They're, I just can't go in any further on the air. But what I can promise you, brother, that there are people that are hardcore operators that are are military, former, and some current, and and you're closer to the truth than you know. And I've spoken to these people myself. So when I tell you that uh, you know I don't think it's going to get to that point, I believe that there is something that's going to happen to intervene in this situation. I believe it with every fiber of my being. I do. Yes, okay, noted, and I hope that's true. It's the only thing that keeps me going. But there needs to be something else. For the military to have the, for those bright young colonels, I use that term, bright young colonels, they're at the water fountains, they're secretaries, they're drivers, mm -hmm. uh, the whole menu of the military everywhere, policing, mm -hmm. intelligence community. What people don't realise is this, social networking, gossip at the water fountain. When you build that energy, that energy up underneath the surface, it gives the confidence of the matters to move, okay? Mm -hmm. The problem with a lot of people is it's not that they lack courage or the right intellect or the right knowledge to make a change. They need to feel at the top. Remember, a lot of people won't even put their name online. They're worried about their jobs. What? So what? What's meant to happen? If, if you won't risk your job or your wife or your marriage or your mortgage, why the hell should General it's retired Secretary of Defence Jim Mattis? He's got wife, kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews. Isn't he allowed to be worried too? Do not criticise someone if you are not prepared to do it yourself. And someone comes to me quietly and starts lecturing me, I said, what's your real name and what's your real address? Oh, uh, then shut your mouth and don't try and lecture me on stuff. You can suggest material. You don't even have the guts to put yourself out there. So don't expect matters to do anything you're not, you're not willing to do. I understand where you're coming from, but people cannot rely on that. They must form the grassroots energy field that will form the foundations for the confidence of the military to act for that little part of that man and woman. But I want to talk to the, to the men, to the men out there. There's something in a man which says protect. It says, I want to attain to higher spiritual values. I want to serve and I want to protect. Greater love hath no man than he lay down his life for his friend. Amen. That one of the basis, amen, of the, and there's a Christian, strong Christian aspect, all right, which even flows into Quran and flows back into the Jewish Old Testament as well. There is that aspect heavily into this supposedly secular document, which says, under Almighty God, for crying out loud, when you take your oath. So you can't, you can't say it's a secular document, really. The point is, 
There are people within the military, we all get disappointed, who aspire to these values. That's why they join policing in the first place. They want to get bad guys. It's in that male feeling of protecting and and chasing and, and, and saving the women and the children, protecting. It's in our DNA. And you've got to tell me that the vast majority of the US military are decent people and they want the Constitution. Those Marines, when they take that oath, in particular the United States Marine Corps, to serve and protect and uphold the American Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic, that is the majority opinion and they need the confidence to act. And if they can't see intelligent people moving in Washington and other places, attending their congressional district meetings, physically engaging in the political process, it's not going to work because Mattis can't do it by himself. They're no, masters the truth. at grassroots. George Washington could not have moved. He ran a business class. That was a business class revolution. But without that population critical mass below supporting, he could not have done what he did. So he said, you know what? Here's the republic. You're going to keep it? So if you don't want it, then everyone just put your hands up and let's just end the experiment now. Just end it now. I don't even care. Just end it now. But just just say what you want to do. But you've got to be smart. It can't be done with balls alone. It has to be smart. And if it's, it's not sexy enough for people, oh, it's not sexy enough, man. I want to take on and get my guns with my boys and get my webbing on and go down to the gun shop. And say, yeah, boy, we're going to stand against the new world order. No, you're not. You're going to cower like a coward the first time you see your mate's head blown off by that 7.62 round. The first time you see that, fried by the robot or whoever, you're going to piddle your pants defecate upon yourself and go like a little B-I-T-C-H to that self-driving truck. So stop it. It's not going to do it. You have got to engage in the political process immediately and you must form relationships and keep it up. Oh, I tried and it didn't work, so I gave up. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. If that's, if that's the best we got, then you know what? Just let the dictatorship New World Order run by Israel and Bibi and Lord Yucca Rothschild. Just let it in. Just let it in. Just let it in. Let's just give up now. Nah, can't do that. <laughs> it's going to take balls and brains, my friend. It really is. I learned balls that can only take you so far. Yeah. Can I, I, have a li- I have a little bit of both. I have a little bit of both. Well, you've got to have a lot of brains and a little bit of balls. Well, I'm, I'm also, you know, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to toot my own horn. But, yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. I, I, don't, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but I think that ultimately our – Ultimately, I kind of look to to what you're saying about Mattis. I think that that what's going to save us in the end is going to be prior military and current military. I I do believe that there is a large contingency within the military uh, that know exactly what's going on. And they've known what's going on for a long time. Absolutely. Look look at Dr. uh, Alan Sobrosky. Yeah. Ten years ago, he did that interview with Mark Glenn in the Ugly Truth podcast. Ten yeah. years ago. He's yeah. walking around U.S. Marine Corps headquarters talking with his colleagues. And what, yeah. people think that's not having an effect? People think, <laughs> oh, I mean, come that's on! Why I, that's why I love Dr. Sombrowski. <laughs> yeah, he had, he had, that man had a bigger effect than most people do. Uh, and, and he, he took a to risk. Him. His business suffered. His business yeah. suffered. He caught a huge yeah. amount of flack when he did that. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. That's why I respect him so much. And and I, you know what? It, you come to think of it, I'm going to reach back out to him. I'd like to get you guys back together again on the air at the same time. Let's 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 work towards that because Alan Sabrowski, in my opinion, he has a and, and it needs to keep being pushed. I, I I don't I don't like it when it kind of when he kind of uh, falls into the wayside because his voice is very powerful. Uh, he's been there. He's done that. He knows people. They respect him. They have enormous amount of respect for him. So we need to keep that, uh, keep that, keep that moving. And I've I've also spoken to him um, about some of these things. Some of the people to contact. Some of the people to talk to. Mark, I might have to. to, to, Tom, to. I might have to. Stop. I might have to stop. There appears to be a fire alarm. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, I will contact. I will contact Dr. Alan Sabrowski, and we will. Uh, we'll get you guys back on. Is that all right with you? Yeah, I mean, I have spoken with him and um, uh, briefly emailed. Um, yeah, and he's quite happy to have a chat. There's no problem there. Awesome, awesome. Well, Brendan, thank you for joining us. Uh, you know, it's it's been great, and of course, we're going to have you back. I'm sure 
often, I, I hope. Uh, well, God let, bless let, you. Let's compare, let's compare our brains and our testicles together, and um, let, let's get a posse, brother. Let's get a posse, the shotgun, the dog, the horses. We're ready. I got some of those things. <laughs> <laughs> Sheriff's badge, deputy, let's do it legal and lawfully. I, and, I got uh, some of them too. <laughs> all right. Very nice. God bless America for all its sins and God help the rest of us, brother. Thank you very much for having me on and, and let's talk soon. Sooner rather than later. Right. God bless you, brother.